Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Elder Scrolls Total War. In the last episode, Dagoth Muthis, our general in the south, went on a rampage against the tribunal, winning several heroic victories and eventually laying siege to Vivek itself. And up here in the far north, the Telvanni have been making a major push westward, conquering Margan and then laying siege to our town of Nisus. Fortunately, our uh, watchtower network caught them as they were going, and uh, alerted Dagoth Ur, who was able to turn tail and start bringing his force back up to reinforce, and eventually strike back against the Telvanni. And while all this is going on, we have a little bit of intrigue in between, with the Imperials making what looked like a little bit of an attempted push with priests into Balmora, which may have been a preemptive uh, preparation for some kind of invasion that they might be planning. Though that said, they don't have much in the way of forces here. So... That's not too scary. So these units in Mount Doom, Dagoth Earth's personal ex-forces, have been retrained now. I think I'm going to start sending them southward into Ghost Gate for now, eventually towards probably Hlatwad, because that's a little bit weak right now, and we have a Lalu Navy floating around there, and I'm a little bit scared they're going to strike at Hlatwad. All right, another turn, another assassination. We'll get this guy. He's back in our territory for some reason. They never learn. Ooh, and this guy... Got something with his retinue, plus one to agent skill. I think he's 10 out of 10 now. What is this that he added? Uh, in addition to blah, 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 a catamite. Not all men find the opposite sex to be the most distracting. Plus one to agent skill. Um, I'm not sure what this is implying exactly. How, how does... Like, my initial, my initial gut thing is, like, it's trying to say he's gay, but I'm not sure how that makes him more skilled. <laughs> Maybe it means that he can, like, try and charm gay men into being assassinated somehow like a is a catamite like I don't I don't know the, the terminology for this stuff I'm gonna have to look this up <laughs> Google there we go now we have a couple excess zombies over here so I'll just send them over to Plotwad <laughs> um, since I don't think there's any benefit in keeping them over here can I train another of these guys no not yet that's unfortunate I will take another priest though that's nice and honestly, I might as well start training up some more dreamers, because I'm going to start shifting all of these guys north. In fact, I can start doing that right now. You have to stay there. Yeah, I'm going to start shifting the dreamers north uh, in preparation for this inevitable conquest of Dagoth Ur of the uh, of Margan and whatever happens to be lying over here. Looks like that might be the city up there. That's a Mott and Bailey. Yeah, that's... Huh, I can kind of see it there. Telvani Mott and Bailey. Uh-oh, one of my dudes has gone heretic. Well, we can't be having that. How good was he? 49%. Do I have anyone better to take him out with? Yes, these two guys are a little bit better, so let's try it this way instead. There we go, 82. Fortunately, he was a shitty one. Dagoth Rallis, he was only one uh, piety, so he can he can go down pretty easily. And that'll actually just go ahead and hopefully, yes, serve to level up Vemin. Awesome. And interestingly, the tribunal has decided not to come over and reinforce Vivek. It's literally just Vivek and a unit of high ordinators in the city, and they're just going to let it be. Okay, I guess they're... <laughs> Poor Vivek. His followers are abandoning him. Or maybe they just have so much faith in this guy that he's going to win because he's a god. I don't think um, that faith is going to be particularly well-founded on this occasion. So yeah, I guess let's go ahead and attack. Let's go... Uh, before we go, yes, we'll assault. I'd like to take a quick look at... Um, the stats of these units. I already saw him. Ooh, yeah, well, now we can see all of his traits, Vivek's, all of Vivek's traits here. What's he got? Um, his retinue is Vivek. Vivek is followed around by Vivek. So yeah, basically just a little bit of history of Vivek there, or a little bit of a lore of Vivek, I guess I should say. It gives him plus five command, plus five authority, plus five chivalry, plus eight hit points. Holy shit. Yeah, he's gonna be hard to kill. Uh, hopefully that's just him and not his entire unit. That might be his entire unit, I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just him, though. I think normally it will define plus eight uh, hit points for this general's bodyguard, if it's the bodyguard. Plus five to personal security, and plus five to law. So plus one morality and plus two popularity. Morality is the only thing I'm concerned about. Say morality, I meant morale. <laughs> plus one morality for musicians. Apparently not a rock musician. <laughs> We also get a little bit of lore on the city of Vivek itself, since this guy is the Lord of Vivek. Uh, what, what do we have? Where does it actually start here? Um, Vivek, Vivek City, often shortened to simply Vivek, named after the god of the same name, was the largest city in Vardenfell, once situated on its southern coast in a large lagoon. The city was a collection of nine artificial islands, 
Each island was a separate district or canton and was made up of a large multi-tiered building the size of a small town. The many bridges, the many bridges and walkways between these cantons created a maze that could be intimidating for new arrivals. Water was the dominant element of the architecture present even inside. Okay. Well, if you want to read all of that, you can go ahead. I'm probably going to read it off camera. I probably shouldn't have done that. Waste of time. And I only have 45 or 50 minutes. Although right there at the end, we do kind of get a little bit of uh, information on the Ordinators, which is the unit that's in his um, army, the only other unit that's with him, so maybe not a complete waste of time. Apparently the Ordinators are the uh, police, kind of, or the special guards of the city of Vivek. Anyways, being the Lord of Vivek grants him plus two authority, plus three law, plus two, co two command, plus to chivalry, plus blank to chivalry, plus one to troop morale, so plus one morale there plus 4 personal security, plus 15 tax collection, so another massive buff there. And basically it just kind of goes on and on and on. I'm going to go through these really quick. I won't read them. You can read them yourself if you want. He's a Dunmer. That's an actual correct one. He actually, well, is he? I guess he is. He used to be a Dunmer. I don't know if he is anymore. He is the Lord of the Tribunal, plus 1 command, plus 6 authority, plus 4 personal security, as aspiring commander, born to command, perfect politician. Promising Defender, I think that is, yes. Noble in Rule, Fair Fighter, Knight Fighter, Religiously Minded, Active Builder, Very Cultured, Traitor Intelligent, An Eye for Beauty. <laughs> Which only gives him minus one to command, uh, interestingly. And here we have one unit, it uh, looks like they have full 120, although it's down to 114. I think, I don't know what damaged them before. I'm not sure what happened there. Maybe they're just dying from attrition because of the siege or something? Well, anyways three experience and you have uh is are those bronze or gold upgrades i think there's a bronze upgrades for weapons and armor ordinators uh tax 17 defense 20 they can actually compete with dagoth ur himself i'm pretty sure so they're nothing to scoff at fortunately he's not actually a better commander than dagoth muthus even though he's a perfect commander dagoth muthus is now also a perfect commander how did that happen what the heck happened here he is a warrior, plus one command, strong attacker, plus three command, siege expert, plus two command when assaulting walls, so that's, both of those take effect this time. He is dauntless, plus two morale, doesn't matter, marks of war, authority, aspiring commander, handsome, very loyal. Oh my god, his, wow. <laughs> Dagoth Muthus' uh, traits, he has more traits than Vivek. Alright, now that I've wasted like five minutes with, before even going in here, here's Vivek itself. Ooh, interesting, it actually does... One, two, three, four, it's actually, yeah, seven districts. It actually has all seven districts. Oh, and the, the rock that's floating above it. Oh, nice. So Vivek does have a custom. How did they even make that? That's cool. <laughs> nice. It'd be cool if they could deploy archers on the floating rock and have them shoot down. That'd be so cheaty, though. That's not going to happen. Anyways, here's the capture zone right here by the end. So we're going to have to kind of fight our way over all of this very narrow roadways all the way down hmm well hopefully my mages can just shoot through these buildings like their archers can shoot through them so I'm going to go ahead and deploy these guys almost on the front lines here all right so I've decided uh, on this deployment I've got my ash spawn around these flanks on the coasts there because I'm allowed to deploy way over there for some reason and uh, my main force up here uh oh what's this he is uh, deploying outside the city Interesting. <laughs> I didn't know he was allowed to deploy outside the city. Hmm. So he might run over there and try to attack them in that case. Better get my cavalry over there to support and one of these units as well. But for the time being, concentrate fire on these cavalry. Because it looks like they're trying to go and take out the ash spawn. Is that Vivek? That's uh, Order of War cavalry. That must be Vivek's unit. He only has two units here. Where is Vivek himself? I don't see him. There we go. He's starting to take some pot shots, though. That's nice. In that case, just send them all over there if he's just going to deploy outside the city. I guess uh, we just got to go with go with the flow. These high ordinators have kind of separated themselves, which I, I don't so much care. I'll just kind of surround this entrance with a couple of units. Eh, there we go. Deployment's a little bit odd. Uh-oh. We got a little pathfinding here. Oh, is he changing his mind? What's he doing? Oh, it was a good strategy, but he's... I think we've caught him or something. Okay. Um, in that case, stop firing at them and start firing at these guys instead. There we go. It cannot hit them. Interesting. All right, well, we've caught them with the cavalry. 
And we'll pull back with them now that the uh, Ashline Swordsmen are here. Don't want to pull back too much, though. So I don't want them moving around here and attacking. Like that. Oh, what's going on? I'm jumping all over the place. Yep, they have decided to keep going. He's still trucking. There's not many of them left, but he's still trucking. Is that... Oh, Viv... <laughs> okay, Vivek... Uh, there's, there's a little bit of a problem with Vivek's model there. He's a little bit invisible. I'm not sure what's going on. There you go. Now you can you can kind of see him when he gets way up close. There he is. But when you zoom away, he turns invisible. All right, it's only Vivek himself left now. That means these guys can probably stop firing. Start firing at someone else pretty soon, and then we'll just send in all of our dudes to take care of him. This battle certainly didn't go as planned. <laughs> I didn't think they'd spawn outside the city and then run away from the city. I mean, I guess it it's a thing they could do. Now Vivek is just kind of skirting us, running away. Fine, I guess I'll just have my ranged dudes take him out then. There we go, he's decided to charge again. Hopefully we can kind of trap him here. That would be nice. No, no, don't, you're not getting away. There we go. Alright, I think we got him. Oh, uh, down he goes. Vivek is dead. And he just kind of dissipates there. He's a little bit half invisible. Vivek, Tribunal Demple, he has fallen. Okay, the False God King is down. Dagoth Ur's time has come. Okay, now we can actually line up here and start taking out those Ordinators in an actual kind of sort of Siege of Vivek, even though there's only one of them. Where did they go? They're way down here. Ah, they've kind of lined up by the capture zone. That makes sense. I think we've kind of taken sufficient casualties just trying to take out Vivek's unit. Our cavalry unit has uh, bitten the dust. Those Ashlanders, they're gone. To the last man. So I think I'm going to try and play the rest of this a little bit smart. I'm actually going to uh, move up my Ash spawn to these flanks. Kind of just pull the same strategy that we pulled on that one little island base before. Hopefully they're in range. I think I'm sending them up there, yes. As you can see, they're moving around on the opposite side as well. Meanwhile, I've got my heavy swordsmen right out front in case they do decide they want to move around and try to attack us. I don't think they'll have the time to make it to us anyways. That's a long run. All right, and one unit is within range. How about you? Uh, you're close enough. Start firing. Yep, they can definitely hit. And these guys are just kind of chanting over and over again. <laughs> That's a little bit annoying, to be honest. Oh, down a couple of them go. All right, these are the ordinators. These guys are going to be really tough if they can make it into melee. But I get the feeling, I think the AI just has to kind of sit here and defend the town square. They have decided to spread out into a loose formation. I haven't seen any other units do that yet. So they might uh, they might be one of the few units to actually know loose formation in this game. I don't know. No, I can, uh, I can set anyone into loose formation. I'm not sure why most other units are not switching into loose formation when these guys are. That doesn't make sense to me. And as the last few ordinators are kind of overwhelmed by zombies here, it looks as though the siege for Vivek is won. It wasn't much of a siege. It could have been a lot more exciting. I wish it was. Oh, okay. Well, we'll just end the battle and murder these guys off camera, I guess. <laughs> um, anyways, it's a shame it couldn't be a little bit more exciting, but I mean, his own armies just kind of abandoned Vivek in the city to kind of fend for himself and ran off. It was only the, the high ordinators who actually stuck with him to the end. So that's too bad, but it is what it is. And there he goes, Vivek Falls. I think there are... are Almalexia, theoretically, uh... Yeah, we'll go ahead and exterminate Vivek. And kind of make it our own. Make it, uh, follow our religion. Now, theoretically, Almalexia and Sothasil should be around somewhere. So that should not be the last god to... Uh, or the, the last, uh, I guess, um, mortal god? What would you call him? He's not mortal, that's kind of the whole point. The last of the, I guess, false... Dunmer gods, I suppose. There's Dagoth Ur, there's Vivek, there's Almalexia, and there's Sothasil. I think those are the only four. And then I guess kind of um, Nerevar, but that's in a different way. He just kind of keeps getting resurrected by Azura. Anyway, buildable in Vivek is a Ingenium for 50,000 septums, which we can't afford. What is it? And how long does it take? It takes five turns. The Ingenium, a special structure, a magical device designed by the Dunmer... Esmaram, Sulomai, Salomai, and uh, Vonam. It enables you to hold the Ministry of Truth aloft above Vivek City without the aid of Almsivi's um, magic. Um, is the Ministry of Truth that meteor? I don't know what the Ministry of Truth is. It does so at a great price, however. Within the new Ministry of Truth, 
stands a sort of oblivion gate leading directly to Clavicus Vile's plane, where the Daedric Prince of Trickery and Bargains holds Bardau in place in exchange for souls. I don't understand what this is telling me. <laughs> what, what does it do? Anyways, if my understanding is correct, this is a device that keeps the meteor floating above Vivek, um, without the aid of Vivek's powers or something. Because I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure by default, lore like Vivek was the one using his magic to keep the the meteor floating above. And eventually, Vivek, I don't know what happens with him. He disappears or weakens or whatever, and the meteor falls, and that causes the Red Year, which kind of like destroys Morrowind. Not completely destroys it, but definitely destroys a lot of it and allows, it weakens it enough for the Argonians to invade. So anyways, I get the feeling if I don't build this Ingenium before a certain time, especially now that Vivek's dead, um, that meteor is going to fall and we might get a Red Year event, which could be really, really bad. <laughs> on one hand, I kind of want to see what the Red Year is all about, but on the other hand, I don't <laughs> want all my cities to be destroyed. So I'm just going to go ahead and actually build the Ingenium before it ends up being too late, <laughs> since I don't know how the script in this mod functions. That said, I might just be selling everyone's souls to Clavicus Vile. <laughs> I really don't understand the vocabulary here. Now I wonder, can Dagoth Draylus maybe bribe this dude Speaking to go away? Uh, how much would you ask for a bribe? Only? That's, um, yeah, I'll take that. That's not bad at all. Yeah, alright, accept it. See you later. Nice, and that army is taken care of now, without me having to spend a single troop. And I believe that is the tribunal completely off Vardenfell. We now own the south coast, except for these annoying Imperials still up there. And I think now, next, we can turn our full wrath upon the Telvanni up north. Well, I guess uh, next order of action, bring in Dagoth Ur to break the siege of Nisus. Here it goes. Yep, and this should just be not even close. In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and launch a night attack because I do not need um, my reinforcement dudes here. I don't think. Uh, who do they have? Uh, I don't know, it might help, but uh, I think we're good. Yep, you know what? Dagoth Ur is going to surprise them in the night, take them unawares, and Great House Dagoth, who is this guy? Captain Dagoth Vorin and his men, they can just, you know, sit over there and do nothing. They already did their work with the Sally, so we're happy the way it is. Okay, and this is apparently some kind of bridge battle. Interesting. Why is this a bridge battle? Unfortunately, we have uh, actual siege equipment and ballistas this time, so if I'm right in my theory as to why the AI is not responding correctly to our Ashspawn artillery dudes, this could be the answer. Having uh, these guys in the army could actually force their AI to act intelligently. Alright, so here's the deployment. Now, our ballistas, as I said, should be able to force them into an attack. They should attack us because we have the artillery advantage. Uh, nothing yet. Let's move the... Ooh, they're, they're pretty fast for artillery, aren't they? Nice, that's not bad at all. I was expecting them to be really annoyingly slow. Anyways, I'm going to move them up a little bit and hopefully get them firing. When they're in firing range, maybe they'll change their tune. This is kind of like a test as much as anything. These things have no range. <laughs> Why can they not fire across this river? This, that, that does not make any sense. Oh, there we go. Are, are they moving up? They might be. I can't quite tell. Oh, yep, now we moved the ballistas into range. They are now attacking. So it's definitely... They, they're not detecting that they're in range of these guys, I think is the problem. Hmm. Oh, man, that bridge is just mur... Holy crap, look at this. Oh, jeez. Like, one volley of these has taken out, like, a hundred guys on this bridge because they're so tightly packed together. That's ridiculous. Oh, ow. Holy crap. Oh my god, these mages are so overpowered. I think, I think, uh, I'll, I'll keep making use of them, because they're in the game right now, for this campaign, but I think my next campaign, if I decide to play another one, I'm going to choose a faction that does not have any mages. And then maybe I'll have to be on the other, like, receiving any, yeah, they're just running away already, that's, wow, that was ridiculous. Anyways, uh, next time I play without mages, like a faction that does not have access to any mages at any point. Mm. I think that'll be more interesting. Anyways, on that topic, if there was to be an update, these guys are just ridiculous. Why is their range so long? Why is, like, the ballista has to get this close to fire across there. Like, you could at least, I would imagine, like, the mod developers could at least make these guys have the same range as artillery or something, and not just be able to fire across, like, an entire map. It's just a little bit overkill. In fact, it's really way overkill. Not only can they fire across the whole map, but they're really freaking powerful too. 
Like, maybe it would be more balanced, I think, if their ability to penetrate through ranks was removed. So one fireball might kill one guy. Then you can kind of use them as little skirmishers, long, super long-range skirmishers, and maybe force the AI into attack or harass them or whatever, and then back off with the rest of your force. That might be one thing you could do. But with them, right now, they're like an entire force of their own. Yeah, we'll just kind of end the battle right there. <laughs> it was pretty, pretty darn decisive victory. Anyways, yeah, basically, right now, they're... If they can stand there and average like 600 kills a, kills a round, which is just... That's, that's ridiculous. They should not be able to do that. They're good at everything, and I think... I've never even gotten them into melee combat yet, because they annihilate everything before it gets to them. But I think when they get in melee combat, they're decent there, too, and they can defend themselves. So, I mean, they're, like, too good all around. And I know they do cost a lot, but I'm getting, like, an invisible bonus with this faction. So it's just paying for them all on its own, it feels like. So I'm not sure, uh, I'm not sure about that. Like, if we look at the armies here... This is this is too cheap for such a powerful unit. This one, I think, is more balanced. The Ascended Sleepers, I think, seem balanced. In fact, I, I think I might phase out Ash Spawn and just use Ascended Sleepers instead because of how much they cost in upkeep. I think they're actually, uh, well, as I said, like three times in the past five seconds, I think they're more balanced. But these ones, just having such a powerful unit for only 700 or 800 upkeep is a little bit much. Anyways, that said, I'm just going to go ahead and make use of them for now until I can take Vardenfell. And I think after I take Vardenfell, I'm going to maybe leave them behind, or at least consider leaving them behind on Vardenfell. At least until I run into a faction that really requires them, that's like using mages of their own. And then maybe I won't even use it then. That said, um, besides these guys, I mean, that's like, these guys are this faction's strength overall. Um, other than that, we have like 10-10 infantry. Granted, they're a little bit larger units than normal. Uh, who, who else can we recruit here? I mean, our infantry is kind of mostly crap <laughs> compared to professional infantry of other forces, so that's kind of... Ooh, I can train another general. I definitely want to do that to start governing all our settlements. Yeah, keep uh, expanding the family. Um, besides, our mages. Our mages are like our big uh, strength, so I have to keep using them. Then again, that... Uh, wage bonus that we're getting, the invisible wage bonus might help me out too, because then I can just, instead of training mages, I could go for just massive zombie armies. I don't know, like, let me know in the comments if you're watching this what you'd be more interested in seeing. Like, should I, should I stick with the mages, which seem a little bit overpowered, almost... I don't know, I, I feel like I'm just steamrolling everyone with smaller forces in them. Or should I kind of switch it up? And if I should switch it up, like, what should I do? Just let me know. Well, anyways, with that aside, Dagoth Ur takes Nisus back Relieves that force. He's got his uh, Ash Spawn back, and now actually, let me uh, let me just go ahead and there we go. I like a nice organized card with all these similar units in similar spots. Um, with that done, uh, how much uh, is the upkeep on this? Three free units. Okay, we're already maxed out. That's good. Um, I will leave them there just to defend this area in case the Red Around decide to suddenly land a force and attack. Um, with that said, now it's time to move on to Margon. We've got a full force here. We've got that should just be able to destroy anything that I've seen over here. Although this is a pretty large force, I think it's mostly militia and just like Telvanni spearmen and men-at-arms though, which don't scare me too much. Now the council wants us to blockade another port. Still don't have any ships. Although I think Vivic actually has a port. Can we start training them? No, I can't train any yet. It does have a port though. Oh, and rather can't quite reach that priest this turn. Oh, that sucks. Oh, hey. And Vemin has decided to rebel. Fortunately, it looks like he lost all his piety in the process somehow. So we don't have a five piety Daedric cultist sitting around here. He should still be handleable. All right. Can you do it? 55% chance. Yes. No. Wait. No. He failed. Okay. He didn't die, though. Next. 33% chance. He failed. Next. 33% chance. He uh, died, I think. <laughs> oh, no. He's sitting around there somewhere, isn't he? Two, three. All right. Next. Yes. 33% chance. Nope, none of them actually succeeded in doing that. Wow. The Kingdom of Valenwood is now the richest faction. Is that so? <laughs> I'll be damned. Alright, finished building some religious buildings, so we'll switch over to Town Guards next, I think. This one's not quite done. And the roads are done in Balmora. I think I'll get the Corn Exchange in there next, because that improves growth rate, yes. And a Town Guard in Aldrune. In the meantime, we've got that Spar in Molag Mar. He can start heading north, I believe. He can't actually make it through there, which is unfortunate. He's going to have to go the long way around. And Imperial's pumping out more priests into my territory. Great. 
That's just more fodder for the assassin, I think. So now I'm going to start shifting these priests up north, I think. At least a good portion of them, I'd say four or five, so that I can start sending them up here to convert these lands. I just have Dagoth or go ahead and lay siege. Ooh, a large t I can attack right away because I have Ballista. Yes, awesome. Okay, so uh, maintain the siege for now. I'm going to start that attack a little bit later. Okay, so now that town guard in Nisus is done, I think it's time I start building ports. I gotta start getting that navy going. We've almost conquered Vardenfeld, we're gonna need a navy to defend it. Molagmar still needs a town watch, unfortunately, so we do have to go with that before I can get to that port. That is the top priority. And we're back up to being the richest faction. Interesting. How, I wonder how, uh, how much territory we hold compared to other factions. Let me check that really quick. Alright, here we go. This is territory rankings. The Something happened with the Redoron. It never announced to me that, they're, that they'd been destroyed, but it says they're at zero territory. And there we are. We are the highest out of the Morrowind factions at this point, I believe. The Tamriel Empire is still more or less holding steady. They haven't lost anything yet, but they haven't gained much either. They just took a couple factions, one or two, or territories near the beginning, it looks like, and have kind of stagnated since then. Looks like the Orsinium... Kingdom of Arsinium, the Oryx have actually been doing pretty well with themselves considering that uh, whole rebellion situation. They broke free of the Empire, uh, ended up at war with Wayrest. How about Wayrest? How are they doing? Yeah, they're actually losing the war, it looks like. At least it's it's still pretty close, but it looks like the uh, Oryx are making headway in the war against Wayrest, and I don't think the Imperials have intervened yet. Yeah, it looks like Skyrim has been gaining territory pretty rapidly, and it's kind of... Um, coincided with the decline of the Redoran, so I think Skyrim has been just wrecking them in that war. Yeah, the Redoran have no population. They must have been destroyed. But how? Uh, is this not a Redoran town? Um, no. These look like rebels. The rebels now hold this place. Did all of their faction uh, members die? Is that what happened to them? I'm really not sure what's going on. Well, anyways, it appears like the Redoran have been the first to fall, and I... End of turn report. No, it, it never. I checked all of these uh, little pop ups that come up, and it never mentioned anything about the Redoron dying to me. That uh, probably would have been of interest. But yeah, for sure, this uh, border, not too long ago, I'm pretty sure that was yellow and red. Now it's yellow and gray. Anyways, uh, our assassin, it's time for him to take out this target. He's been elusive for too long. There he goes. Assassination mission success. And now he's just going to move straight over towards these guys so that next turn he can get one of them. Okay, so let's make another attempt at this, yes. shall we? Um, how about you? That's a 22... Did you... No, I think these guys lost piety because they all failed to take this guy out before. Alright, 33% chance, he fails. 33, he fails. 55, he fails. Uh, who, who else? There's one more somewhere. Is it you? 22% chance, he fails. Brilliant. Uh, I'll tell you what. Yes. Who am I going to leave here? This guy can stay and keep trying to denounce them. The rest of these guys have to get out of there. We're at 36%, the cult. And uh, as soon as this Ingenium is built, which costs me a huge portion of my treasury. In fact, let's let's take a look at this really quick. Financial rankings. Do, 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 do. Territorial, financial. There's, there's the big dip, I think, from selecting the Ingenium. Anyways, yeah, these guys have got to start getting north and start helping out with the conversion of the territories up there as we take them over. So they gotta go. We cannot afford to just leave them. We'll leave Reeler. That's the guy? Yeah, that's the uh, big guy. The big man on the block who can hopefully manage to denounce this dude eventually. And the rest of these guys heading north. Alright, I guess since we have siege equipment, let's just go ahead and uh, attack Morgan right now. And since we are Dagoth Ur, we can potentially go for a night attack. Let's see whether it's worth it. Alright, in this first force, led by Eranor Felvenim or whatever. Yes, he has bodyguards and two units of Telvanni cavalry, 14-14 with an eight charge bonus, handful of professional soldiers and mostly militia. Now here, Captain Barrel. <laughs> Captain Barrel. Yes, yeah, I'm a barrel. Um, archers, just same thing pretty much. Mix of professional and militia dudes. Really, I'm not too scared of this. I think I could probably take it on at once, but I'm not going to take any risks. I'm going to go for the night attack, just to be on the safe side. Why uh, take more casualties than I need to in a city battle? All right, here we go. What do we got here? Um, looks like they're mostly... No, they're defending the walls all around. Those archers, yep, archer militia up on the walls. Guess I'll have my ballistas start attacking 
the gatehouse. Oh, they're retreating. They're retreating to the center. I'm not sure why they're doing that. Yes, it's just a mass exodus from the walls right now. Looks like they're giving the walls up. Is someone shooting at us over here? I guess we're in range of the archers. Well, that's going to have to change. We're going to have to pull back a little bit. I didn't think they'd be able to shoot that far. Yeah, they've just kind of all ran away to the center of this place. This is an interesting place, by the way. I think these are... I think this is just like a Dunmer town. Because these do look familiar. familiar. They look like the buildings you kind of find in, like, Balmora, I think, in Morrowind. So yeah, I'm pretty sure this is all custom as well. Anyways, most of them run away. Just left a couple of archers on the sides of the walls. I'm really not sure what their ingenious plan is here. It seems like a bold strategy to me. That's a nice little skybox in this map, by the way. <laughs> nice bright moon over there, full moon in the background, and the kind of foggy mountains all around. That's pretty cool. I like that a lot. And a bigger mountain down there. The mountains may be a little bit exaggerated, but uh, well. Yeah, these guys are just... Congregating in the center of town, taking hits now from the uh, ash spawn because they've just decided to stand out in the open. Uh, that's not uh, probably the, not the best strategy they could have chosen. Maybe it's all part of the grand master plan, though. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe it'll turn out that these are just like a bunch of dummies. They weren't real people, like mannequins. They just stacked down there to fool me, and um, all their real dudes are about to pour out of the buildings once we run out of ammo. That's that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. All right, the gate's at 96. Could this be the one? It is! Yay! And now he just fires through the empty gate. And another one. Oh, nice shots. Uh-oh, one of you missed. Uh-oh, punishment time. So now I think it's finally time to send some of these Ashbon up to the walls and probably Dagoth Ur himself. They'll just kind of be there to support him if he needs it. Oh, wait, time out. I take that back. No, stay away from the walls. Most of you, especially Dagoth Ur, I don't need him taking this. I'm going to send one of these Ash Zombie units up here to take these guys out because they're reactivating the towers, and that's a problem. Oh, hell yeah, that's a problem. Look how fast these things are firing. What are these? Super towers? Holy crap. I mean, look at them go. That's like... That's got to be more than a single unit of uh, archers per tower. That's just firing like crazy. All right, well, we've made it inside. Hopefully they can uh, defeat just some archer militia. That would be nice. Um, the walls are ours, but the tower is still theirs. Should I send these guys in? Should I, like, bother with that? Might just kind of... This might have been a mistake. I might just lose these ash zombies. <laughs> if I lose these guys, then next thing... Yeah, now here comes the Telvanni cavalry into support. I think they're pretty much... Oh! General's gone. <laughs> okay, well, that's a little bit distracting, but who was that? That was Erinor Fev... Okay, that was the actual family member. So that's the first Telvanni family member we've managed to take down. Beautiful. These guys are still fighting. They will fight to the death. Um, I'm not sure they're going to be able to win this, though. These are just Spear Militia. They might beat the Spear Militia. Doubt they're going to be able to beat the Telvanni Cavalry. Probably just not going to happen. <laughs> not even... There's no probably involved. That's just not going to happen. Um, in order to beat them, I might want to be sending in Dagoth Ur. But I don't want to get him picked apart by the towers, so this is a problem. I think what I'm going to do, just in case... How much ammo do these guys have left? All right, that did not use up all their ammo. I'm going to start sending these guys around to the side, slowly because eventually I might need them to break down another gate. Oh yeah, the uh, Morrowind Militia are now fleeing. Awesome. So if I can actually get them over here, send these guys in over there, maybe I can get a surround on this cavalry. I might be able to do this yet. Yeah, just run this way. Oh darn, men-at-arms waiting for me. Okay, fine. Attack those guys. Move these guys in as well. And why not a third unit of zombies as well? Can kind of defend a flank against anyone who might come in here and try to counterattack. Alright, come on. Get in there quicker. We need you. And in the meantime, uh, it's just a short run in the gauntlet at this point, so I can get Dagoth Ur in there at this point. Why not just send all the zombies in to support him, just in case? That should be good. Alright, Ash Zombies in the gate. Now they can start the attack on the flank of the cavalry. These guys will not break. They have infinite morale, so they're going to have to completely grind through these before they're unpinned. Okay, these guys they do have to get out of the gate, though. Unblock it. Oh, they're retreating. The cavalry's retreating. <laughs> How about, wow, these guys are really fast, by the way. I like that a lot. I think I like the Ash Zombies better than the uh, than the Ash Spawn Heavy Swordsmen, to be honest. The Swordsmen look cool. They're like the mummy dudes. but um, And they also have the, the Frightened effect. And they're organized, which I do like. These guys are just kind of mobs, which does kind of suit the faction, I suppose. But these guys are so much faster. It's just really nice. It's fun to... They're, they're just kind of like a pleasure to handle it. I love handling you. Looks like these guys are on the gate, still activating the towers. I'm going to send one unit of ash zombies up there to take care of them. That should be enough for one or two archer militia units. Meanwhile, these ballistas are just about halfway to position at the second gate. 
I'd rather not in- ooh, I'm hitting my own guys here, yeah, just fall back. I'd rather not engage them at the uh, town square if at all possible. I think they're charging without orders, stop that immediately. Um, yeah, I'd rather lure them out of the town square and then engage them in places. Yeah, they're charging without orders again, stop that, you. That's uh, probably the big negative with them, I suppose. These guys have broken- oh yeah, the ash zombies made it to them on the walls, awesome. So they're broken now, they're gonna run right into Dagoth or and here comes the end of them. Uh-oh. <laughs> the face of death right there. Oh, and he's just marching slowly forward. He's just playing it cool. Doesn't even care. All right, yeah, now time to kill these guys. Slaughter them. <laughs> here, here come the zombies to support. You guys, too. Get, get down from the walls and help out. All right, so that's enough of that. We have plenty of zombies inside the gates. I don't think we're going to need to break those things down. I can just send them to capture the gates and let these dudes in. And then we'll go for a little surround in the town square, I suppose, since they're just kind of hanging out there and not doing anything. Looks like they are responding slightly to me taking that gate, which works for me, I suppose. I can just go and eat them up with my zombies. Meanwhile, you guys, stop firing at them, please. Fire at someone else. There you go. Oh, yep. <laughs> that was too late. We just destroyed half my own unit. And they've decided to completely ignore me when I told them to stop firing at someone else and keep firing in that unit, so we've taken another, we've taken another giant knock. That's, uh, wow. One projectile just killed all those zombies. All right. The stage is set. Are you ready for this? We're about to pull a 28 days later. Select. Not not everyone, everyone, but everyone. And just move there. <laughs> Here we go. It's the 28 days later zombie charge. I'm going to have to zoom it up a little bit too. Just to uh, for the added effect. They're going to come from every direction here. Uh-oh. <laughs> no, 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 no. Continue the battle. We need to finish off the 28 days later. I know we're going to take some casualties, but that's fine. Here they go. You can just eat them from behind. You get them from behind. Uh-oh. Let's uh, look at the... There we go. Now we can see where everything is. There's not many of them left, but now there's going to be even less left. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, yeah, yeah. This is what it's like to be under siege from Dagoth Ur. <laughs> fighting amongst piles of their own charred corpses from the mages too looks like these are going to be the last remnants right here oh they've got no this is dagoth ur never mind okay dagoth ur can kind of get in there nice and slowly if he can ever make it to the front he can help them out but yep the remnants are falling let me just take a close look at this I'm being punched to death all right this guy c come on uh oh no he's behind you oh he's already dead man my pick is already dead all right this guy then the uh ponytail Slash, what? Oh, he's dead too. Okay, this isn't working out for me. Alright, you, you're like the last one. You have to do this. You can do it. You only have like 10,000 zombies to kill. Come on. The Nerevarine could do it. Probably. Oh, now he's just trying to run away. What's he even doing? No, it didn't work out for him, whatever his bold strategy was. Clear victory. 117 men lost compared to uh, 1,623. And did anyone gain experience? No experience. Oh well, that's a shame. Dagoth Ur didn't even get any kills. Every time he ran near someone, they just ran away. He caught 26 prisoners, though. They couldn't run fast enough. And of course we execute, because that's just what we do. And now Margon is ours, yes? And they go down too. Will they just be driven back? Why are they still standing? They made a little movement like they were going to die, and then they didn't. <laughs> okay. Um, 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 um. Uh, how many... Okay, it's small. We can massacre this. That's fine. A um, little bit of rebellion still, but it'll be fine. We need to start building an altar of visions and repairing the walls. Yes. Actually, let's repair the walls first, since I think if we do that, we can actually start construction on this one same turn. <laughs> if I understand how that works. Oh, and also, of course, low tax rate, because we don't need any more money than we already have. And Dagoth Ur has picked up... Well, first of all, he's now Dagoth Ur the Malevolent. Ooh, he's picked up a title. And secondly, he's picked up another member of his reven, uh, retinue, a torturer. Only a depraved and insidious beast feels the need to have someone to carry on acts of torture while he is busy elsewhere. It gives him plus three to dread, plus one authority, plus two to public security, blah, 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 plus one to unrest. Oh, plus one to unrest. That's okay. He won't be in Taos very long anyways. Um, he's mostly going to be on the move, conquering everything. And plus three to law. But wait, it actually get Okay, well, whatever. <laughs> plus one to unrest, but plus three to law. So it kind of cancels it out and adds a plus two overall. Well, whatever. Um, 
I'm mostly concerned with that dread. That's a cool thing. How much dread does Dagoth Ur have now? He's full. He's full up on dread. Ha! <laughs> Beautiful. But his command he has a little bit... There's a little something to be desired there with his command. His authority is, for some reason, not max yet. We're going to need to work on that. Oh, and also we have our Dagoth Ur the Malevolent. Here's where he got his new title from. Malevolent leader, this man's harsh message of rule and leadership have increased his dread reputation. Plus four dread and plus two author uh, authority. So he did get plus two authority there. That means he had even less before. Okay, so he's maxing it out, slowly but surely. So we're here. These guys are right next to us. Can we just push them away, perhaps? No, we can't do that. No no chance whatsoever. Wait, who's holding us back? Okay, the catapults are holding us back. If we leave them in here, we should be able to push them. No, what's going on here? Who, who's holding us back? <laughs> okay, this is just really strange. Now I'm outside the city, but I can attack him. No idea what's going on. Well, it doesn't really matter. I'm close enough to reinforce, so this is fine. Oh. Mm, over here, Nisus should be, yes, training priests, so we should be getting our priests up there very shortly to help out. Um, you can't move this turn. They'll be up there pretty soon. What's the religion looking like right now? 0% call to Dagoth Ur. That's going to be a problem. I'm surprised that the Ballistas are able to keep them in line. That's odd. The Telvanni have decided to strike back with pretty much all they have remaining. I'm not sure what that is yet, but I'm pretty confident it won't last long. I'm just going to hit them right back. Maybe I should hit this guy, force them to reinforce. Now let's break it. Let's break the siege. Yes, Go straight for these guys. Yeah, they're just going to break the siege right away. And then I guess we'll... Go, who should we go for? We'll go for them and finish them off. They should be separated now. Yep, they're... <laughs> they retreated the wrong way, and now they're all on their lonesome. Again, we'll go ahead and night attack, because just having reinforcements kind of screws up the whole battle plan sort of thing. And what are we facing off against? This is the smaller force, just mixed forces. They shouldn't be too much of a threat. In fact, they shouldn't be any threat at all. Okay, we've opted for the tried and true strategy of, strategy of standing on the hill at the highest point we can and shooting at people. They seem to have been trying the same thing, but it's not going to work out because we have bigger range than them. Alright, this has gone pretty much as well as you might expect. I'm just sending my zombies to clean this up. And there we go. Go ahead and end the battle. Zero losses. Nice. I thought they might have lost them to the bows there, but I guess not. And Ash zombies gain one experience for presumably running in circles? Whoa! <laughs> and I went to attack those guys, and they retreated all the way around the mountain range over to here. Which is actually not great for me. That just gave them a, like an ideal position to attack Alrun, um, which is just defended by a bunch of dreamers. Granted, they don't have too much in the way of skilled forces either, and this has walls. Um, and unbreakable light infantry on walls can equal hell for anyone attacking, so I'm not too worried about this, I guess. It's fine. So anyways, with that done, I, I'm pretty confident that he won't be able to take any towns with this force that he has. I think we'll be okay. Um, I could be wrong. That's definitely a thing I could be. Um, he could run around here and attack here again. You know what? I'm going to leave like one unit in here to help defend just in case. I don't need so many ash spawn. I'm going to leave one unit of ash spawn over there, ranged units on the walls to help defend that thing. And then we're going to move Dagoth Earth straight along here and towards the, this Telvani fishing village, or the Mountain Bailey, or whatever is supposed to be taken. And he, meanwhile, Balmora is ready for another upgrade. And I think at this point, just the best thing I can do is just put up a Leather Tanner. I think that's um, going to be the most useful. So I can start retraining some units in Balmora, or anything I train there from now, uh, from this point forward, should have... I think all of these are... Do, 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 do. Does it show what they what they need to upgrade? Maybe over here? Um, no. Maybe they don't have any upgrades. This guy's heavy mail. I don't think we're there yet. Padded. Okay, so... I don't know if we're going to be able to get those upgrades right off the bat. Oh, we can assassinate one of these guys. The Imperials keep on pumping out priests. It's a little bit annoying. They just keep coming. Um, so yeah, take out another one. We'll just keep our assassin here, trying to keep the priest number in control until we manage to take the rest of Vardenfell, and then we can turn our attention to this little problem, Caldera, that just keeps pumping these guys out, one after another after another. They just seem absolutely determined to uh, convert this uh, entire area back to the Imperial Cult, which I, I cannot stand for that. Can't do it. And, um... Rather, Dagoth Rather has gained another skill point on top of, I think he was already 10. So is he like an 11 now? What is he? Born to kill three 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, that's ten, but he also has Catamite, which adds another one. So yeah, he's technically like eleven. I don't know whether having above ten has any effect on anything, though. Yes. In the meantime, I guess I'll send my own little curate army up to Caldera to hopefully distract them a little bit. Okay, come on, do it. Yes! Yes! All right, way to go, Dagoth Reeler. He finally managed to... Uh, Execute the Blasphemer, I suppose. So that's wonderful. Now he can start moving on. Yeah, we have plenty of percentage points in Dagoth Urkult down here, and he can start moving north as well. I'm just going to send all these southern guys to Caldera, and hopefully we can uh, keep them occupied, so any priests they train there will have to stay there to kind of deal with their own religious situation and not just spread out all over the damn place. Well, this is a little bit worrying to me as well. The Hlalu are just standing there on the border. They have a ship up there. They might be planning to attack Lawad. Um, what do they have? They have a general with some pretty decent soldiers in that unit. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just send a couple of guys to reinforce Lawad, just in case. In fact, just send all of them. Yeah, there we go. And now we'll move this new general, Dagoth Rath- there's another Rather. <laughs> He's the same name as our assassin, isn't he? Rather, uh... Yeah, Rather. Dagoth Rath- we have Rather the Killer and Rather the General now. Anyways, rather the general is now in Ghostgate, he's going to be in charge of this force, and eventually he might have a job f coming up fairly soon. We'll see how it goes. Anyways, that's where I'm going to call it, I think, for now. So we've managed to snag Vivek in the south. Here, Dagoth Muthis completes his incredible campaign. This army over here just abandons Vivek and gets bribed and paid off by uh, Dagoth Draylus over here, and they just dissipate into the wind. They had had enough of this. They uh, decided to join the winning side, I suppose. And then over here, up in the north, we've managed to push away this invasion force by the Telvanni, completely decimate all their forces, push them way back to here. This is all that's left of that. And now we have Margon. We've expanded, and Dagoth Ur is already pushing straight through. He pushed straight through Margon, and he's headed down here. I don't know what this place is called. Maybe I can get a hint here. The Grazelands? He's heading to the Grazelands to try and take that as well and push the Telvanni entirely off the island. That may be the very last territory, and then um, all we have to worry about then is here, the Imperial Legion. We're going to get to them soon. It looks like they're building a force. I don't like that. I don't like them building armies on my lands. This force is getting bigger, isn't it? So we're going to have to push them out before. It looks like they're they're already shifting their attention to this area, trying to solidify their, their influence. we got to push them out before that happens, and uh, I think that's where... Dagoth Gilvoth might come in, start building an army in Balmora. He might be uh, in charge of the northern part while, uh, what's his face over here? Muthas starts taking out these southern ones. Because Gilvoth, I don't know if I showed it on camera, but he's uh, feeling unappreciated. So we have to start making him feel appreciated again. And then we have this little Hlalu force, which is worrying me slightly, and a navy to carry them across the sea. So we might be looking at a naval assault from the Hlalu, landing an army on our shores, and we can't be having that either, so we have to shore up our defenses in this area, Belmore and Hlawad, for two reasons, both offensive and defensive, and that's going to be in the next episode for right now. Uh, thanks for sticking with me.